Hey, you evangelized Josh Cannon here along with James Peter and my good friend Joe Zambone. Joe is a campus minister at York University in Toronto, Ontario, and he's also a Catholic musician and one of whom I am a big fan. I am a real, real, <laughs> real big fan. <laughs> I don't have enough reels memorized. It's crazy how real is this right now. Hey friends and welcome to our YouTube channel. My name is Josh Cannon from youevangelize.org, an online membership community for the committed missionary disciple. We provide tools, empowerment, and community for Catholics who want to change the world. I'm so happy today to welcome my friend Joe Zambon, a Catholic musician and campus minister. And we're going to be talking about evangelization, both in person with young adults and through uh, music as a way of reaching people. It's a great conversation. I think you're going to get a lot out of it. And I hope you enjoy. Joe, why don't you tell us a little bit about the work that you're doing in the church right now? So I uh, am working at York University, the Catholic chaplaincy there. I've been uh, now uh, as a pastoral associate there for seven years. Um, and I do music, singer-songwriter. I get on the road and do stuff. Awesome. And how did you find yourself? Um, like what led you to working in campus evangelization? Yeah, you know what? It kind of fell on my plate. Um, I had finished up a degree in theology in Ottawa. Um, I had no plans of getting into campus ministry because I didn't think I was qualified. And then all of a sudden, I got a phone call from an old friend saying that there was a job opening up. You were actually leaving the job. Oh, yeah. And uh, I got your job. Right. <clears throat> so, and then, uh, then seeing how it was a pretty good fit, that I think there were... A certain set of gifts there that I feel like could employ that. Maybe I didn't even, I don't know if I would have ever really discovered until I had been put into mm. a place like that. So. Mm -hmm. At You Evangelize, we're, we're all about uh, making the concept of evangelization uh, something that's real and tangible and practicable in our lives. What have you found to be really effective in terms of bringing the gospel to people who maybe don't know Jesus in a super personal way? Yeah, I think getting to know somebody is really huge because um, if you look at how Jesus evangelized, um, it's so unique to each person. He's always attending to the needs of each person. So he's listening. He knows the person. Um, and so he can always speak into their life in the way that they're going to be able to receive it. So, so much of, I think, evangelization, evangelization is actually first listening. Mm -hmm. Um, because you have to listen to your surroundings, you have to listen to the person, um, and then you feed into that. Um, and I think that's how the spirit moves in different ways, like how to bring that message. Mm, absolutely. We're going to have to uh, pass this guy out now. Say bye-bye. Bye, Joe. Pope Francis talks about that in Evangelii Gaudium, where he says evangelization consists mainly in listening and with a disregard to the constraints of time. Like Essentially, like really being... Uh, present to people. That's not, always, that's not always easy to do, right? Um, I, I think, I mean, not only just in a certain situation, because it depends if you have them in a quiet room, okay, it might be a little bit easier, but the fact is it's, we're in a busy world, um, and often, you know, you're kind of catching somebody between the next thing. Mm -hmm. um, so you might only have a window of opportunity to be with them. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's kind of like, again, to you have to make sure that it's something that they want to then start to invest time in, mm -hmm. you know, a relationship in. Right. Otherwise, like, yo, man, I don't got time for this. Right. Um, I don't see value in this. I don't have time for this. See you later, you know? Right. <clears throat> yeah. So it sounds like there has to be a, a, a sense of a trust and, and a friendship um, before people are really willing to, to listen to what we have to say about what our faith is all about. Yeah, and I think to then you know, have that relationship in place where there is um, trust and everything too. Um, you can be, you can start to be more vulnerable as well. Mm. Um, and if, 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 evangel if Jesus is par excellence, the evangelizer, the one who he himself brought himself to others, well, he, he did it in a way of vulnerability. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And he, he leads with vulnerability. Um, so he makes himself trustworthy. Um, but it, it means that the, another person, too, for those to receive that message, they also um, <clears throat> have to be willing to be, be vulnerable. Because I think those who had the hardness of heart were not able to receive that seed. Mm -hmm. You know, they had the hard ground or whatever else. It, you know, is the, 
is the word gets sown into their life. Mm -hmm. That I think this 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 play of vulnerability and trust definitely need to be in place mm. um, because I think then the person of Christ can be shared. In those mm. places. Joe, we were just speaking off camera about the image of the Samaritan woman uh, and how that was um, what Jesus start the way Jesus started the conversation was not, you know, with this proclamation of who he was, he started it with, with a question. Yeah. It's interesting again, how I think Jesus, you know, how his approach to be in relationship with us is gosh it's it's about being with him but he really makes it about us mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and so he's interested in her right um and that then draws her into him right you know and so this whole his, his whole gaze outwards that jesus can see that you know this is a woman who's in a situation mm -hmm. you know she's frequenting a well um, that is not, is not giving her life. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so he, knowing that he gently walks with her, um, and then he proposes, mm -hmm. you know, then he proposes now, have you heard of this other, mm -hmm. you know, this, there's another type of, well, mm -hmm. you know, it's actually in, it's going to come from the inside out, right. you know? So he, he, again, he's so attentive to the person that he doesn't come in with, and maybe it was an agenda, right. um, that he's kind of like, hey, yeah, where does it hurt? Tell me where it hurts. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. He speaks to the to the need that she is familiar with before going to the deeper need. Mm. And that allows her to to walk with him into that place and to and to and to really open up. We talked about earlier about trust and about how when ministering to young adults. At times, there's people who are ready to go right away. They're ready. They just want to go to the heart. And others, it just requires time to open up. And, uh, mm. yeah, it's a good image for us, isn't it? To, to, to be able to meet somebody who is, you know, in some ways far off and to journey with them as they uh, open their hearts more to the deeper, deeper things. I was just thinking one thing to add on to that, which is interesting how I think what it does is it allows someone to also themselves, it's an invitation to seek mm -hmm. um, and to seek and to find a treasure mm. instead of giving them the pearl right. and saying, hey, here it is. Right. Um, because then that's, I think, the image of like, mm. you're giving your pearls to swine, but it's like, hey, if if they're also in a place now where they're ready to seek, mm -hmm. um, where they're ready to receive, mm -hmm. um, then, I mean, now they're going to go out and then they're going to see the treasure and they're like, oh my gosh, I need to buy that. Right. You know, I'm ready um, to leave all things to go after it mm -hmm. um, again too it's 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 meeting them where they're at and then allowing them to actually go on the journey within as well like hey like where do you think god is in the midst of this mm -hmm. you know yeah and, wow so i guess it's a real authentic listening that's required it's not just a calculated sort of scientific um these are the steps i need to take to bring this person to christ but it's in a way it's like um it's like a entering not not maybe it's not a covenant but it's entering into a real relationship um to be willing to walk with this person to also be willing to learn yourself um and to allow the holy spirit to work amidst all that you know it's really more of an art than a science isn't it yeah because i think if you try to then like look for a model mm -hmm. um with jesus like every situation seems to be so different in some ways but it's still the same that he's meeting a person um and then he he journeys with that person and they all go on in some ways they're coming from different angles they all arrive at christ in the end but mm -hmm. um they're all coming from different angles you yeah know? different entry points <clears throat> interesting yeah. yeah um joe when you when you um write music um do you start with the intention to um put spirituality in there and speak to people in a spiritual way? Or uh, do you just write from a place of your own experience and, and where your own heart and your mind is at? Mm. Yeah, I am. Um, I feel also too, every song I write is so different, the approach. Mm. Um, but often, yeah, it, it starts, it starts with my own usually questioning. I, I'm asking a question myself. Um, and it's when I wrestle with the question, then usually uh, I find an answer that eventually comes just in my own heart. Like I feel like the Lord is kind of giving me to at least resolve 
my question. Mm. Um, I sometimes question for a while, so sometimes songs don't get finished for a while because mm. I don't feel at peace that 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 thing, you know, I was, you know, trying to search for, you know. Um, and so sometimes, I mean, yeah, I'm just writing in many ways from an intimate place of my own self, mm -hmm. um, but others often it's inspired by a story I hear from somebody else. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like my response to them. Right. So I don't know if they'll ever hear the song. Right. Um, and they might not even want to hear the song. Right. But it, it gets inspired by someone else. And, and I am kind of then thinking about mm -hmm. outwards mm -hmm. when I am and am writing it. That's so interesting because again, when we're talking about this listening, it's neat because it sounds like you listen to people and you reflect upon it afterwards, and sometimes you don't respond directly to them, but you respond in the in the form of a song, which really makes it like a real ministry. And this is the interesting. I mean, I'm I'm not, I'm not saying I'm Christ. Yeah. But the interesting thing is, I then always write my songs in first person. Mm. So I write it as if it were my experience. Mm. Yeah. So I allow myself to go there mm -hmm. to be the divorce, to be the abuse, mm. to be the one at this loss or whatever else. Yeah. Um, and so for me, I get to, in many ways, to kind of go on a journey of, like Christ, that, you know, he he became one like us in all things. Like mm -hmm. someone who, he is like, oh man, like I, I have no idea what it's like to be a truck driver. Like, right. I, no, like in the idea, like he allows himself to enter into that same thing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he knows. Right. You know. Yeah. Like St. Paul says, he, I have become all things to all people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's been really, really helpful, Joe. Thanks so much. It's been a, an informative uh, and, uh, and uh, inspiring and enlightening conversation. I really appreciate it. Where can people go to, to hear more from you? Uh, the best place, I think, is either Google. Uh, just type in my name, Joe Zambo, and you'll probably find my website, um, joezambomusic.com, or my Facebook, or somewhere else that is hosting me. Absolutely. And if you're not listening to this guy already, listen to this guy. Uh, I frequently listen to in my house and at least one or two of my daughters have the impression they're going to marry this guy when they grow up. So we'll see whether that comes to this pass. I don't know. But a bit of an age difference. But Joe, it's been awesome. Thanks again for being here, buddy. Oh, my pleasure. All right, bro. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Joe Zambone. What a great guy. Check him out, as he said, Google him and uh, start listening to his music today. If you enjoyed this video, I invite you to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and uh, maybe share it with your friends. And if you'd like to know more about how to change the world, go to uevangelize.org and sign up for our newsletter today.